Hi, I'm Robert Kajiwara, Indigenous Luchuan, also known as Okinawan or Uchinanchu, President of the Peace for Okinawa Coalition based in Okinawa City, dedicated to promoting Luchuan culture, history, language, and rights. Thank you very much to Carlos for inviting me to be here today speaking about imperialist aggression. Thank you as well to all of the other speakers. Unfortunately, imperialist aggression is a topic that Luchuans are all too familiar with. Before I continue, I should point out that this video contains images of graphic violence and warfare that may be disturbing to some viewers, so viewer discretion is advised. Since time immemorial, Okinawa was an independent nation known as Luchu, with its own unique culture, history, languages, values, and identity. Luchu maintained close, friendly relations with China, Korea, and Southeast Asia. Luchu prospered as a center of international trade, finance, and cross-cultural exchange, and was the chief facilitator of a large and highly influential maritime trade network that stretched throughout Asia. Luchu was highly respected by other peoples around the world, including Westerners, who marveled at how a small nation such as Luchu was able to build a prosperous society where poverty was virtually non-existent. During the 19th century, Luchu became recognized by the international community as an independent country via the signing of treaties with the United States, France, and the Netherlands. In 1879, Japan used its new modern Western-style military to invade and illegally annex Luchu. This would be the first of Japan's many imperialist conquests through World War II. As Japan began to lose the war, it deliberately placed an inordinate amount of military presence onto Okinawa Island with the intent of sacrificing Okinawans in order to protect the Japanese homeland. This resulted in the Battle of Okinawa in 1945, in which roughly one-third of the indigenous Okinawan population was killed during a time span of just around three months. Japanese soldiers used the battle as a cover-up in order to deliberately murder Okinawan civilians, particularly those they caught speaking the native Okinawan language, as well as Luchu independence leaders. Japanese soldiers also used Okinawans as human shields and forcibly conscripted Okinawan civilians into the battlefield including women and children. After the war, most of Japan's other colonies regained their independence, but not Luchu. Instead, the United States decided to keep Luchu for itself to use for military bases. The United States military forcefully relocated thousands of Luchuans from their ancestral homes and imprisoned those who resisted in order to build these military bases. The United States also released convicted Japanese Class A war criminals such as Nobusuke Kishi because they believed he would lead Japan in a pro-America direction, which is exactly what he did. He would go on to become Prime Minister. Kishi's grandson, Shinzo Abe, continues the fascist legacy of his grandfather. He and numerous other Japanese politicians are continuously pushing Japan further into a right-wing, neoconservative, imperialist, and fascist direction. Not only are they trying to revive Japan's military strength, but they are also rewriting history, including Japan's textbooks, in order to cover up Japan's war crimes. For this reason, many of the younger generations in Japan today are completely unaware of Japan's dark past as an imperialist aggressor and are under the belief that Japan did nothing wrong. This is a grave concern for many Okinawans because although Okinawa makes up less than 1% of Japan's land area, it contains over 70% of Japan's military presence. Which of course means that Okinawa could once again very well be devastated in the event of a conflict. From 1945 through 1972, Luchu was under direct U.S. military rule, which meant that it also missed out on the decades of economic growth that Japan experienced during the 50s and 60s. 
Lu Chuan strongly resisted being under U.S. military rule. So in 1972, the U.S. gave Lu Chu to Japan without a vote from Lu Chuan's in a move that is very much illegal under international law. And today, Lu Chu remains under joint occupation by both the United States and Japan both of whom commit major human rights violations against indigenous Luchuans on a daily basis. The military takes up around 15% of Okinawa's land and around 30% of its arable or best lands, but contributes only around 5% to Okinawa's economy, running at a huge deficit. This is, of course, a tremendous economic burden on the Okinawan people, many of whom are forced to work two or three jobs just to get by. Okinawa maintains a very high child poverty rate at around 25%. The U.S. military commits numerous crimes against Okinawan civilians, particularly violent crime against women and children. The United States military is also responsible for tremendous environmental destruction in Okinawa, including the current construction of another U.S. military base in the northern part of Okinawa at a location called Hinoko. The base's construction is destroying an ancient coral reef home to hundreds of rare and endangered species, including the Okinawa dugong. In February 2019, the Okinawan people held a referendum in which the overwhelming majority voted against the construction of this base, and yet both the United States and Japan governments simply ignored the referendum and are continuing to build the base anyway. To make matters worse, the U.S. military has also poisoned Okinawa's water with cancer-causing chemicals forcing thousands of Okinawans to buy bottled water. The U.S. and Japan governments claim that this heavy military presence is necessary in order to protect Okinawans from China. However, very few people believe that, and even the U.S. government has privately admitted that Okinawans do not see China as a threat. We know this via WikiLeaks, and it was published in the Wall Street Journal. I've done several videos in the past talking about Okinawa's relationship with China. Please check those out if you are interested in learning more. I will, however, say that China and Okinawa have always had very positive, friendly, and mutually beneficial relations. This dates back even to ancient times. China has never once harmed Okinawa or Luchu in any way, and actually China has helped Luchu in many ways. Whereas Japan tries to rewrite history and tries to cover up Luchu's glorious past as an independent nation, China has rightfully acknowledged Luchu's history. And even recently at the United Nations, China played an instrumental role in helping pass a resolution that is being referred to as the legacies of colonialism. This resolution is very important and is being applauded by Luchuans and other oppressed peoples around the world who have experienced the harmful impact of Western imperialism. So no, China is not a threat to Luchu, Hawaii, Guam, or any other nation in the Pacific. Rather, China offers an opportunity at multipolarity, an opportunity to expand our business, trade, and cross-cultural relations in mutually beneficial ways. This is what I and many others believe we should be doing not only with China, but with many other nations around the world. This is how we can build a more peaceful and prosperous society for us all. I'm just about out of time for today, so I'll end here. To learn more or to find ways you can help support us, please visit our website, peaceforokinawa.org. We do accept donations. We also sell merchandise, the proceeds of which go to help us fund our mission of promoting Okinawan culture, history, languages, and rights. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.